Quacksbacker. I'm David. This is the How to Play video of the Quacks of Quindlinburg. Hopefully you'll have a chance to watch the playthrough and the review as well. The Quacks is part of our project to review and do videos on the top 100 board game geek family games. The, behind me is a sample of the top 20. And Quacks, as of August 2019, is in the top 20 between 10 and 20. So the game involves uh, the players getting together in a city over a nine day bazaar to uh, create different uh, potions to cure ailments. So that's why we're called quacks because whether or not they work. So you'll see here that each player will get a, a pot, a droplet, and you'll have a bag of ingredients which I'll go over here soon and we're going to be drawing out of our bag ingredients to try to score as many points without the pot exploding. So it is a score the most points game over nine days, which will be shown here with the flame. Uh, we're going to be scoring victory points around the track. And each day, we're going to go through one, two, three, four, five, six phases each day uh, to, as we're trying to score the most points. So the quacks is a push your luck game with some uh, strategy involved in what ingredients you're going to add to your bag. So let's go over the setup first because the rule book is actually very straightforward. There's just some things you want to pay attention to that uh, you'll see in the playthrough. We almost, we did forget a rule briefly and then we remembered, uh, I reread it again and said, oh, we've been playing that wrong because I was unsure if it didn't sound right as we were playing it. So again, there's little things that if uh, you're not paying attention, you may play uh, incorrectly the first time. So let's take a look at where we're at in the rule book here. So here's the story. Again, we're making different potions. The setup is going to cover pages uh, two and three here. So right, what you see is a setup for two players. Each player gets a pot that matches their color. You see the, the ring here is red, which matches my pieces. Each uh, player also get a, a bag for their ingredients. So you get a drop, which goes in the center here on zero. You get a rat's tail, which I'll explain what happens with that. It starts coming to effect on the second turn. You'll start with a ruby, which you can spin those rubies to get different effects to help you do better. And then you get a, uh, a flask, which you'll be able to use by turning over a different, at a certain point in the game each round if it hasn't been turned over, you'll all go over how uh, that's used. Then you'll see here, again, I'll show on a different board here. You want to make sure you play the right side of the board because there's a variation. You don't want to play the side with the test tubes. You play this side here, and this tells you what ingredients you're going to add to your bag to start. Now, they're called white chips in the game. I couldn't find what else they might be called, but you'll get one three white chip, two two white chips, and four one white chips, you also get a garden spider, that's a value of one, and a pumpkin, that's a value of one. There's no other uh, pumpkins, they're all valued one, but you'll see here that there are different uh, values of spiders. There's a two chip and a four chip. The mushroom, the, the skull, I think it's called a crow skull, and the African death's head hawk moth, you don't start with these, but you'll be able to purchase these. You'll also see right here the mandrake and the ghost uh, breath will come into play uh, later in the game on the second and third turn. You'll be adding these uh, ingredients. How do you tell the difference between these pieces and the other pieces in the game? Because you'll see that there's uh, different sides depending on the number of players. This is set up for a two-player side, and these are the starting ones right here with the... Uh, with a little marker right here. And this is uh, the two player one right here. You'll see it shows it right here is the two player one. So let's uh, get the bag ready here. You'll see that I've already put the, the, uh, the white uh, ingredients to the side. Got one pumpkin and one garden spider. So I'll pick these up. And I'll add it to the bag. You're also going to put the fortune teller cards here. One will be drawn each round. 
you'll ha need the other white chips off to the side here because during uh, turn six here, phase six or day six, you're going to add another one white chip. See here you'll see that you'll add the mandrake root on turn two, the ghost breath on turn three, nothing added here, and then the game will end on turn nine. And then these chips, this is if you go over 50, will turn over. And again, this is set up for a two-player game. You'll also take the... Make sure I'm using the right turn here. The bonus die will be placed off to the side, which will come uh, into play as the game uh, each round. So, this is set up for a two-player game. Each player has their ingredients in their bags. And then they're going to simultaneously... Well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. So that's set up. So now let's go into the turn sequence. So turn sequence is the first thing you're going to do. So here's the how to play part of the rule on page three. So you're going to turn over a fortune teller card. Then we will check rats, but I'll show that will be on the second turn. So I'll show that uh, later. And then we will do the potion phase where we'll be drawing out of our bag. And it's important that we don't exceed seven white chips in sum, which I'll explain here in a moment. So once you get a sum of eight, your, potion, your pot explodes. And then we uh, will go into certain chips, ingredients, as you're drawing them will trigger things, which I'll go over in a moment. So let's go back to what we're doing first. First thing we're going to do, uh, now that the game is set up, is draw a fortune teller card. So again, here's our pile here. The, the first player will draw it, and then the second turn, the next player will draw it. But for the first turn, we, we turn it over, and you'll see, if I were to show you the deck here, there are blue cards and purple cards. Blue cards is usually something that you need to pay attention to at some point in the, in the, fa in the round or the phase or the day uh, to trigger. You've got to pay attention to when it triggers. But the purple will happen right away uh, and usually for all players. But since we drew a blue card, let's see what it says for this first turn. Okay. If you reach a scoring space with a ruby this round, you get an extra two victory points even if your pot explodes. So that's one thing I haven't talked about yet is the anatomy of the, uh, of the pot. So if I were to put red here, red starts on zero, same with blue. And as we draw chips, we're going to be adding to the pot like this. So for instance, if I drew a two chip, two white chip, now that's not good because I don't want to exceed seven. I don't put it in the first space. I count two ahead and put it here. Now let's say I draw uh, my one pumpkin. It will go here in the next space. So now I'm going to have uh, four coins to spend if I stop. But again, I don't only need, I, I'm not going to stop yet because I want to make sure that I get as many points as possible and I'm not in danger of busting, so to speak. So if I drew the three chip next, we'll go one, two, three. So now I'm going to get one victory point and seven coins to spend. And I'm close to uh, busting here, but I know that in my bag, I have two twos and a whole bunch of ones. So I'm still safe. I can still draw again, even if I get another two. So let's say I draw the spider. Okay, it goes here. Now I can, I'm still doing all right because you don't count the other chips in that total here. Remember, you don't want to exceed seven as it says here. So I'm going to draw again. All right, I got a one. Now I'm in a situation where I may not want to draw anymore because I know there's another uh, two in the bag because the two plus three plus one is six. If I draw that two, I will bust. So if I stop here, I'll get nine coins to spend, one victory point, and one ruby. Now rubies are great because you'll be able to spend them, and I'll, I'll go over that in a moment. So we're going to be drawing simultaneously from our bag. Now at some point, the game says that you can, each player can draw something out of, out of their bag and hold it and then reveal because uh, later on in the game, you may want to see how far somebody is along from busting 
before you might press your own luck. So early on, it's usually not a big deal, but towards the end of the game, you may want to each player draw out of their bags, then reveal, place, then draw out of the bag, then reveal and place, and that way players can assess each other's progress to decide if they want to push the luck or stop. Uh, you'll see that in the playthrough a little bit. Uh, towards the end, we, we kind of think about doing it, but you don't have to do that. All right, so I've explained when you're drawing, you're placing it on your pot. Let me change cameras here. You're placing it on your pot to try to get as many victory points and coins. And what are you going to do with those coins? Well, you're going to buy more ingredients because you want to add more ingredients here to your bag so that you draw other types of ingredients instead of white chips, which could cause you to bust. So we have our fortune teller card. We know that if someone stops on a ruby, they're going to get, an, uh, you know, right before a ruby, they're going to get two extra victory points. So all players know that. So now I'm going to model how one player would draw for the first round. We've drawn a fortune card. We don't check rat's tails yet. Well, I'll do that uh, the second round after this round. So here I am, the red player. I'm drawing. The blue player would be drawing at the same time. And so here I drew a two, a two white chip. So I placed it two away from my droplet. Then I, oh, I drew another, a one. Okay, I'm still all right. I haven't exceeded seven yet. And then I draw a white, a one pumpkin. Does not count towards my seven total. Now you may say, what's that flask for? Well, I say I draw, uh, I'll show you in a moment here. Now, the green, the garden spider. If I stop here, this is where a special effect can happen. It says here, for each green chip uh, that is the last or next to the last chip in your pot, take one of the indicated ingredients at the end of the, uh, of the day track. So this action will take place right here after we roll the bonus die. So let me move this over just a little bit. So I may want to stop there but I can still draw one more. I can still draw one more chip here and still get to the bonus of the garden spider. So I know I'm gonna draw another one. I'm also not in danger of busting, of exploding my pot. So here I got a two. Now this is where the flask can come in. So if I put the two here, I have two, four, five. I know there's another three in my bag. Let's say I don't like what I drew. I can turn the flask over to put that two back in the bag and then redraw. Now one rule that we were playing wrong is that you can't do that action if the white chip you drew causes your pot to explode. You have to use it like what I did right now before it explodes. So I put it back and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna draw again. And here I drew a one. Now that's not actually the best strategy to use that because now I have two three, four. Okay, actually it wasn't too bad because now I can draw the three without danger of exploding. So I'm drawing again. I got another one. Now this is where uh, I'm probably not going to push my luck because there's another two, actually there's another three in there and a couple ones. The odds are I'll probably draw the three even though I can get over here to where the 11 is. But if I draw the three, I'm going to go bust. So I have two, three, four, six. So I'm going to stop. But let's say I did draw the three. It would go right here. I'd explode. I could not use my flask even if I wanted to. I already used it. And what's going to happen now is that when we get to this part of the day, I either going to take the victory points or the coins. I can't do both because I exploded. I also cannot roll the bonus die because whoever's got furthest along on the track will get the bonus die. So the consequences of exploding is you don't get to roll for the bonus die and you cannot uh, get both coins and victory points. You gotta choose one or the other. So here I exploded. I'm either gonna get two victory points or 11 coins. Now blue, I'll just do blue real quick here so we have something to compare. Oops, let me go back to that. So blue goes. Okay, they got their spider. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just going to pretend they drew that later. A two chip. 
a one chip. Oh, I went too far ahead. One goes there. Another two chip. All right, so now they draw the one. They're going to stop because they don't, if they draw the three, they're going to explode. So they'll stop at the one. They did risk, the say, the, the, the garden spider was drawn out right there, and they got lucky and they didn't draw the three. So they stopped. So that is the end of the potions phase, as it's called in the rule book here. The potions phase. And we, uh, as we were drawing, I'll go over in the second round, certain chips can make things happen. So for instance, if you drew a mandrake or a mushroom, you have a decision to make, which I'll go over here in a moment. But I just want to go over first the... Uh, the first day with the basic setup, and then I'll add some of the, I'll go over some of those special chips as you acquire them in your bag. All right, so the day is over. I exploded, so I don't even get the bonus die. Blue, even though blue only got to seven, and I got to eleven because I exploded, blue will uh, get to roll the bonus die. Now let's say I didn't explode, and somehow I got to there. Let's say I, it was a uh, uh, a mushroom that I used, and I got this far, and I was at the 12, then I would roll the bonus die because I was further ahead. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this is a rule that people can forget. A little rule here. You'll see that there's multiple numbered spaces that are numbered the same. So here's 15 and 15. Let's say that uh, blue got to this 15, but red got to this one. I'm just using these to illustrate. Red would be ahead by 115, so it would be further along in the track, so red would roll, roll the bonus die. Now, if they're both tied, again, this wouldn't normally be here. It would be a chip, like, like a chip like this. Uh, if it's tied, then both players would roll the bonus die. So that's just a little rule to keep in mind. All right, so back to... The first thing you do after everybody's done drawing their ingredients. The bonus die is rolled. Blue gets the bonus. They roll it, and blue gets an additional ruby. So I rolled it, uh, a ruby, and now blue gets a ruby. Now let me show you what else is on the die. You get a ruby, you can get one victory point, you can get an additional pumpkin ingredient, which would be, which would be put into your bag. You can move your, uh, your droplet one space, which, or you can get two victory points. So what does that mean when you move your droplet one space? That means next turn now, you'll place your first chip from this position. So it allows you to get further ahead. The further you can move your droplet, which I'll explain how that happens, the further you can get ahead. Uh, it just basically, well, there's no other way to put it. It allows you to place your ingredients further ahead and skip spaces. Uh, so they rolled a droplet, and that will move ahead right now. So now we go to the special ingredients. So we don't have, uh, you couldn't have acquired a, make sure I'm using the right term here, a, a Death Heads Hawk Moth. Nobody has those yet because at the beginning of the game. Although... We do, we, nobody has the uh, crow skulls yet, or the, uh, I'm sorry, those are spiders, uh, and nobody has the ghost breath. So we can do the spiders, though. I was having trouble seeing it. If you remember, I simulated here that blue had their spider at the, the, as the last ingredient, or it could have been the second to last ingredient. So because blue did that, we look here, and it was the one spider, uh, blue will get a one pumpkin right now to add to their bag. So blue takes the one pumpkin and puts it in their bag right now. So that was the special chips that you check at the end of each day. Now we go to rubies. Was anybody on a ruby track? Even if you explode, you check to see if there's any rubies. Nope, no rubies here and no rubies here. But if for some reason uh, blue is right here, blue would get a ruby, but that didn't happen this round. Now we go to 
uh, victory points and coins to acquire more ingredients. So the red player has to decide, do I take two victory points or 11 uh, coins? Red's gonna take 11 coins, because at this stage in the game, it's more important to have more ingredients in your bag so you don't draw so many white chips. Now here's a rule for acquiring, uh, uh, acquiring ingredients. You can acquire up to two ingredients each turn, but you cannot acquire the same one twice. So red, for instance, could acquire a, uh, let's see here, we'll do the, the skull, the coral skull. For, well, actually, you know what? We'll do the, he's just going to acquire one African's death head, man, uh, death head hawk moth. So that would go right into his bag. And let's look at what that does. Why would that player want that? Well, again, this is the one side for the two players. It would be different for, th for three or four players. You'd play the other side. If you draw as many black chips as the other player, you're going to move your droplet up one space, which is great. But if you're the only one to draw it, or I'm sorry, not the only one. If you draw more black chips than other players, you get a ruby and you get to advance your droplet. So right away, the red player is, is decide, thinking, I want to have, I want to draw those uh, Death's Heads Hawk Moths so that I can get my droplet ahead because blue can only spend seven coins. Blue is not even able to acquire that uh, ingredient. So blue is going to get, because blue didn't explode, it's going to get one victory point. So blue moves up here, one victory point, and gets to spend seven coins. All right, so what's available here for seven? It's going to take a pumpkin, add another pumpkin, and a mushroom, uh, a one mushroom, and that's seven. Now, you could have acquired other things, but Blue just wants to add more to her bag. So Blue adds it into the bag. So let me explain what mushrooms do. Okay, so mushrooms, put this chip aside after you have stopped drawing, choose to either use it this turn or save it for the end of a future turn. So when you draw it, you're gonna put it aside. So that's an interesting little uh, rule there. And the playthrough, I think that we, didn't, we weren't always putting them aside. Uh, but it, it seems like this, is that an option? So let me look that up here in this little handy appendix here. Okay, so there's different versions here. So you don't have an option. So that's one thing we were playing, doing wrong in the playthrough is that when you draw the mushroom, it must go off to the side. It doesn't say may. So uh, you could have multiple mushrooms off to the side. So let's say that blue drew all these off the side. Blue can decide which ones to use this turn or to save them for next turn. So blue might have gone four and then used the two. Does not want to use the one. That way uh, blue gets the ruby. So how this, how this would have looked is that at some point along the way, blue drew the four, puts it to the side. Some along the way drew the two, put it to the side. Maybe, it, maybe blue had the one from the previous turn and didn't use it. So now at the after blue is done drawing, we'll place the four and the two, and then not place the one on purpose in order to get a ruby. So that's how mushrooms work. And it, uh, you'll see in the playthrough that we were, we were deciding right then and there whether or not to place a mushroom. But according to the rules, you have to pl just put it off to the side. And then after you're done drawing all ingredients, you decide if you want to add it to your pot or save it for the next turn. And you can do that for multiple mushrooms. So if you draw one, two, or three, you still put it to the side and you decide which ones or any of them or all of them to use. So let's uh, go over a couple other special ingredients. Uh, the skull, the crow skull could have been acquired as well. So if the pot explodes, this would have been good for the red player, within the next one, two, four chips, 
you get victory points and money during the evaluation phase, but no die roll. So that means that if I would have had the skull during, here's the evaluation phase here. If I would have had a one skull right here, and then drew the three, sorry, it would have been right here, and then drew the three, I would still get victory points and coins, but I would not get to roll the die if I was ahead. So that's one advantage of having the crow skulls. And I already went over the, the death heads. Ma uh, I always get the, the pronunciation wrong here. The African death heads hawk moth. Now, we'll go over these in just a moment. So, we just acquired new chips. Now you get to decide here, if, if you have two rubies, how you want to spend them. Red has one ruby, can't do anything. Blue can spend two to turn the flask if it was turned over back over, so that's not a, an issue. Uh, but can spend the two rubies to move the, the, the drop ahead, and she will. So now, she's starting here on two, and it, it will start further out, so it will increase the odds of getting more points. So at the end of the turn, you pick up all the ingredients, Put it back in the bag. Hopefully, I didn't have this. I might have some stragglers in the bag that I didn't actually acquire for the second round. Red didn't move the droplet up at all. Used his flask, so he's going to have to get two rubies if he wants to turn that over. So now we uh, go to the flame. The flame advances here to the, where you see the mandrake. So now the mandrake is added in. So the mandrake, the next chip that is placed is moved ahead twice as far as its number indicates. So this is a really good one to have. So I'll put this right here. So how does that work? Let's say I drew a one mandrake right away. I put it here. And then I drew a four spider. Say I had these in my bag already. It would go one, two, three, four, but the mandrake doubles it. One, two, three, four again. So mandrakes are really good to if you draw higher numbers. If you draw a one, so I drew a, a one white chip. It would go over here, two ahead. So that's a nice one. Now on the third round, you'll see here, when the flame moves, you acquire ghost breath. And you'll see again that if you have the death's head, hawk moths, the spiders, or the uh, ghost breath, you need to see how many of them are in your pot and where they are, because remember, spiders only, uh, the spiders only take effect if it's the last chip you draw or the second to last. The, the hawk moths, you count how many you have total in your pot and compare it to any other player. And then the ghost breath, you'll see here, it's also, uh, you count how many you've placed. So if you placed one on your pot, you get one victory point. If you place two, you get one victory point and a uh, ruby, and if you happen to place three of them or more, you get two victory points and get to move your droplet one space. So that will uh, happen, and you'll add that to the ingredients in the third day. All right, so let's do one more turn here. The next player in turn order will draw the fortune card. Oh, it's a purple one, so let's read it here. Choice, take one black chip or any one two chip or three rubies. Well, this is a really good card. So each player would make that decision. So blue is going to decide in order to try to compete with, with what red has uh, is taken. It's going to take a black chip. So uh, blue adds that to the bag. Uh, red needs rubies because... He's going to want to turn his flask over and advance the droplet. So you could have also chosen any two chip, but that's what they, these players were deciding to do. Now we check for rat tails. So if you look over here, right now blue has one victory point and red still at zero. But let's say it was this situation. We're later on in the game. 
you count in between how many rat's tails. So red, uh, there's one rat tail between red and blue. So that, this is the catch-up mechanic. That's what's really interesting about this game, that it gives you uh, a way for players to catch up without giving up. Because what can happen is without this catch-up mechanic, players who are basically going to lose will just keep on trying to push it and they'll possibly keep on exploding they'll fall f further behind. But with the rat's tail, you're more likely to keep on playing uh, strategically. So what does that mean with the rat's tail? Based on the, sco on the score here, if it was really the situation, I was actually down to one. There's two rat's tails in between. So now, temporarily, for this turn, I'll place the rat's tail two spaces ahead of my droplet. So now I'm going to start at three as well. But let's say it was only one ahead. Let's say I did get one victory point, and blue got two victory points. So now I would only be one rat's tail ahead. So we draw again uh, after we check for rat's tails. So let's do that. Red will draw here first. I'll simulate that. Okay, so here I drew a one white chip, not a good way to start. Remember, I don't have my flask, so I can't put any of them back in. I have a sp one spider. That would have been nice if I would have gotten that towards the end. A two white chip. A three white chip. That's not good, because now I have six. And I have still twos in my bag. So red's going to stop. Now blue will draw. Now again, this is simultaneously. Obviously, I can't do it at the same time. Remember, blue got to add a lot of pumpkins uh, from the die it rolled and then the fortune card. So blue has actually a lot more chips. All right, so the one mushroom puts off to the side. Blue will decide if to place it at the end of the turn. Okay, a one pumpkin goes here. Another one pumpkin. So blue's on a, on a good on a roll here. A one white chip. A two white chip, all right. It's getting a little worried there now. A one white chip. A two white chip. All right, so that's four, six. So uh, blue's going to stop. Now, blue can decide to place this mushroom now or save it for the next turn. But blue will decide to place it now in order to get 12 coins. So that's the end of the potions phase. Now we look to see uh, what's next. We'll see who, who gets the bonus die. So we compare numbers. Red has nine. And it's going to get a gem. That's I mean, uh, Ruby, that's nice. But blue uh, has more again and has a 12. Well, actually, blue didn't have more last round. It's just that red exploded. All right, so blue gets to roll the bonus die and rolls a one victory point. So blue moves up here, one victory point. Let me take off picture in picture. Moves up one. Uh, okay, let's go back to this. So we, we evaluate now. Does anybody have any uh, death's head hawk moths, any spiders, and no ghost press are available yet? So let me move this up here a little bit. Nobody drew any Death's Heads Hawk Moss, although each player had one in each bag. The spider that was drawn here is too far away from the, uh, the end of the track, so don't get that. And we don't have any ghost breath. So that didn't do anything. Now we go to rubies. Uh, red is going to get a ruby. Blue is not next to any rubies. Now we do the evaluation of getting victory points and spending coins. Nobody exploded, so both players get to do that. So red is going to move up one victory point. Red moves up one victory point. Blue is going to move up two victory points because blue got further ahead. One, two victory points. So now we go to the buying things. Remember that you can only buy you can buy up to two ingredients, but not of the same kind. So red has nine uh, coins to spend, and so nine will get a mandrake, a one mandrake, and add it to his bag. Red has twelve, right here. So 
red is going to acquire another death's head and not spend the last two. You don't get to save them. So blue has two death heads hawk moths. So now we go to the end of the phase where rubies can be spent. So this is where red is going to spend rubies. It's going to spend four rubies and move up two droplets. The rat goes back down here. The ingredients slide off, go back in the bag for both players. Now red could have spent those rubies to turn over the flask, spent two of them, but red would rather get, a, get ahead and keep up with blue here because blue is at three as well. So let's look at the third day. The flame moves here and now we add the ghost breath to the available ingredients. So you do that over nine days. You keep on advancing the track. At the beginning of the next turn, we draw the next fortune card. Red is uh, behind one rat's tail. So red would actually start out one space ahead of, of blue, would have a one, point, a one point advantage. But you know, you're drawing from the bag and get unlucky or lucky. So at the very end, you compare your score but you're going to have a conversion decision to make, which I'll show you here. So at the end of the last turn, you could decide to buy a victory point with either five coins or two rubies. You can repeat this as often as you like. So at the very end, uh, it doesn't make sense that you're going to spend your coins and getting ingredients that you can't use. So it's not uncommon at the very end to get all the way out here to 27 or, th or even 24. Let's say I had 24. Uh, coins. So I convert that into four victory points because five into 24, you don't round up, would be uh, four victory points. So then if it was at the very end, let's say it's more like this. And I was behind. I'd go up four. Two, three, four. And blue would do the same. And they would convert their points. But uh, And then you could uh, spend two rubies to also move up. And whoever has the most victory points wins. So that's how you play the quacks of Quindlinburg. And so it's very important to pay attention to the ingredient rules. I mean, we've played this uh, several times and you just heard on this how to play that I had to reread the mushrooms again. I was thinking that it was a may, but it's, you actually do have to put it to the side. And then one thing that we played wrong is with the flasks is that I taught it right here, but the flask allows you to put a, a, a white chip back, or it can be any chip for that matter. Let me see. Yeah, if the last chip you drew was white, you may put it back in your bag by using your flask. So this is, again, one of those important rules you gotta pay, in, pay attention to. So they do emphasize it here. But sometimes you forget. Important, the last chip drawn causes the pot to explode. The flask cannot be used. So that's a situation where, yeah, I read that. I just, it just didn't sit in. You know, there's a lot of little rules to remember. Uh, so that's how to play the Quacks of Quindlinburg. Watch the playthrough. You can see all nine days. Keeping in mind, though, that when we do the mushroom, I think we, we play it a little wrong uh, a couple times. And then... We did play the, Julie's uh, pot did explode and we did use the flask wrong the first time too. But you'll get a sense though of how the nine days uh, evolves and how uh, the interesting decisions you got to make of how you push your luck. And if we get 100 likes, we can do the variations in here. You see at the very end of the, of the book there's game variations and there's even different uh, ingredient books that you can use as well. And there's even an expansion out now that we'd love to play as well and show you how that works. So if we get 100 likes, we'll do another series of how to play and a playthrough and a review of the expansion and the variations. So thank you for watching. I'm David.